In the last lesson we learned for basic Fourier series, we need the following three eigenvalue problems. In the last lesson, we solved an eigenvalue problem in the form of 4.1. In this lesson, we'll solve an eigenvalue problem in the form of 4.2. Recalling number lambda is an eigenvalue if and only if there exists a non-zero solution to the problem given that specific lambda. A non-zero solution is called a corresponding eigenfunction. In this lesson, we'll compute the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions of x double prime plus lambda x equals zero with x prime of zero equals zero and x prime of pi equals zero. Again, we need to handle the cases lambda greater than zero, lambda equals zero, and lambda less than zero separately. First, suppose lambda is greater than zero. Then the general solution to x double prime plus lambda x equals zero is x equals a cosine of square root lambda t plus b sine square root lambda t. And this is because the corresponding characteristic equation is r squared plus lambda equals zero, where again lambda is greater than zero, and therefore the characteristic equation has two complex solutions, plus or minus i square root lambda. So this is why the general solution is in the given form. And because we have x prime of zero equals zero, and x prime of pi equals zero, we now need to find x prime, which is the derivative of x with respect to t, shown here. Notice this does require the chain rule. And now we use a condition x prime of zero equals zero, which implies b equals zero. I've shown this work in blue on the right. Given x prime of zero equals zero, we substitute zero for t into x prime and set it equal to zero. This gives us negative a square root lambda sine zero plus b square root lambda cosine zero equals zero. We know sine zero is zero and cosine zero is one, which indicates the equation is only true when b equals zero. So if b is equal to zero, we now know x prime is equal to negative a square root lambda sine square root lambda t. We also know x is equal to a cosine of square root lambda t. And now using the condition x prime of pi equals zero, we substitute pi for t into x prime and set it equal to zero. Again, using the equation x prime equals negative a square root lambda sine square root lambda t, we have negative a square root lambda sine of square root lambda pi equals zero. A can't be zero if lambda is an eigenvalue, and therefore the equation is true when sine square root lambda pi is zero, and this only occurs when the input square root lambda pi is a multiple of pi. And therefore square root lambda must equal k for a positive integer k. So square root lambda equals k, then lambda equals k squared, hence the positive eigenvalues are lambda equals k squared for all integers k greater than or equal to one and the corresponding eigenfunctions can be taken as x equals cosine kt. Recall we know that x equals a cosine square root lambda t, and since square root lambda is equal to k, we have x equals a cosine kt. If we let a equal one, we have x equals cosine kt. And now we suppose that lambda equals zero. In this case, the equation becomes x double prime equals zero, and therefore the general solution is a linear function, x equals a t plus b. Notice the second derivative is equal to zero, which does satisfy the differential equation. From here, x prime is equal to a, using the condition x prime of zero equals zero. Well, if x prime is equal to a, and x prime of zero equals zero, we now know that a must equal zero. And if a is equal to zero, then we have the equation x equals b. Notice the condition x prime of pi equals zero doesn't give us any new information. It still implies a equals zero. So now we know b can be any real number. So lambda equals zero is an eigenvalue, and x equals one is a corresponding eigenfunction. So again, when lambda equals zero, lambda is an eigenvalue, and x equals b is a corresponding eigenfunction, where b is any real number, we will let b equal one, and we'll use the function x equals one as a corresponding eigenfunction. And now we consider lambda less than zero. In this case, the general solution is in the form of x equals a hyperbolic cosine of square root negative lambda t, plus b hyperbolic sine of square root negative lambda t. This is a general solution because the corresponding characteristic equation when lambda is less than zero is r squared minus lambda equals zero, where the roots are plus or minus square root lambda. Recall in general, when the characteristic equation has two distinct real roots, for example, this equation here, where the roots are plus or minus k, we can write the general solution in the form of y equals c1 e to the kx, plus c2 e to the negative kx, but if we use the definitions of hyperbolic cosine and hyperbolic sine, we can also express a general solution in the form shown here, y equals d1 hyperbolic cosine kx 
plus d2 hyperbolic sine kx. So this explains why our general solution involves the hyperbolic trig functions, and then we're using square root negative lambda because if lambda is less than zero, and we multiply both sides by negative one, this is equivalent to negative lambda being greater than zero. For the next step, we find x prime, which requires the chain rule, and then using the condition x prime of zero equals zero, we substitute zero for t into x prime and set it equal to zero, which I've shown here in blue. Hyperbolic sine zero is zero, hyperbolic cosine zero is one, and therefore the equation is only true when b equals zero. So if b is equal to zero, we now know x prime is equal to a square root negative lambda, hyperbolic sine of square root negative lambda t. Using the condition x prime of pi equals zero, we substitute pi for t and set x prime equal to zero. This gives us a square root negative lambda, hyperbolic sine of square root negative lambda pi equals zero. Recall that hyperbolic sine is only zero when the input is zero, and because we're considering lambda less than zero, the input into the hyperbolic sine function is not zero, which implies a equals zero. So because both a and b are equal to zero, we don't have a non-zero solution, which indicates when lambda is less than zero, the only solution is x equals zero, and there are no negative eigenvalues. Let's summarize our findings. The eigenvalues and corresponding eigenfunctions are lambda sub k equals k squared, with an eigenfunction x sub k equals cosine kt for all integers k greater than or equal to one, and there is another eigenvalue, lambda sub zero equals zero, with an eigenfunction x sub zero equals one. I hope you found this helpful.